Hi, it's Jan Beta. And as you can see, I have my Atari 2600 uh, Junior set up today because I want to try something. I recently got this uh, 32-in-1 game cartridge. This is a very common cartridge you can get for very cheap that has 32 2 kilobyte uh, games on it that you can switch by turning the console on and off. So you turn it off, turn it on again, and the next game um, starts up. There's a little um, counter in here that counts the games and starts the uh, changes the starting address in the ROM. So the console basically sees the next game then. There's also a little capacitor that um, keeps the settings, so to say. So, um, yeah, you can switch the games by turning the console on and off. Um, the fun part for me is that supposedly the ROM in here is pin compatible with um, EPROMs and I want to try today to make a 16-in-1 uh, cartridge with uh, 4K games because the 4K games uh, usually are a bit more sophisticated than the 2K games. They are, there are very nice 2K games um, also, which are on here. And you could also put 2K games on a 16-in-1 cartridge, but I, I want uh, basically to have um, as many games as possible in a cheap way. There are these professionally made uh, multi cartridges with uh, SD cards and stuff like that and flash memory, but they are very expensive. So this, I got this for around 10 euros, I think. Um, I have an EEPROM burner. I have some experience with the soldering hand, so I'm gonna give this a shot first. Oh, and the first thing, of course, uh, that's why I set this whole thing up, should be um, showing you how this usually works. So, let's do this. Right. So, now, we have the game there. That should somehow work. Oh, So we can basically turn this off, and if we turn it on again, we have the next game in the list, which is this one. And so on. So, and you always have to switch it on and off to get to the next game. So, yeah. That's basically it. 32 games on here, some are nice, there's um, tennis on there, I saw that, and stuff like that, and some pretty pretty nice uh, little games. Um, not the best choice Atari could have made, basically. It's not the best games in the world on there, but it's quite nice to have this, and we are going to put our own games on there. And I already compiled a list of games I want on there, so I hope this works. Let's see. So, and here's our first problem, how to get these apart. Um, usually there's either one screw in the middle or two screws in the sides um, beneath the sticker here. So, what I'm gonna do, because I don't want to keep this sticker anyway, I'm gonna peel it off and um, yeah, remove it all together so we can have a look at where the screws are. Uh, it's a bit sad, I know, but this is never going to be 32 and 1 again, probably, so... I'm going to make my own sticker, probably, at some point. If you wanted to keep the original um, sticker on there, could probably heat it up and stuff like that. Yeah, okay, there we go. Uh, rip it apart. Okay. That's it. So much for... And I think this one has... Screw somewhere in the middle, maybe. Let's see. Oh, there's there's a screw, I think. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so this wasn't all in vain. There's our screw. 
in the middle there. No, it doesn't. All right, so this is the inside here. Yeah, what we are basically going to do is to desolder the ROM and put in a socket for an EEPROM. Firing up the desoldering station. I'm going to desolder this and put in a socket. Okay, so that should do it. Wow, this desoldered pretty nicely. I think it's already loose. Yeah, there we go. So this might just be the tidiest desoldering job I, I've done so far. This went very, very smoothly. And look at the circuit board. It looks nearly looks good as new. So I am going to solder on a 28 pin socket here and should fit nicely, which it does. I'm going to tag one corner here. That's a bit, that's a bit much even. And I am going to take another corner. So, soldering in the socket. Okay, there we go. Cleaning it up. Hope I have it the right way around there. That yeah, looks like it. Now we could, if you burn an EEPROM with um, 2K games, 32 2K games, we could just put it in there and it will work. In order to use this as a 4K cartridge, um, we have to make some modifications to the um, counter circuitry so that um, it counts in 4K steps rather than in uh, 2K steps so the right steps are made if you turn it on and off um, to select a game and don't start in the middle of a, of a game uh, binary. We have to put in some wiring and we have to cut some traces. Let me show you. So we have to cut this trace here where the little via is. And um, yeah, basically just cut it through with the knife. Make sure. To not cut anything else. There we go. Okay, so I've cut this trace. It shouldn't. Yeah, there's a little dent there that I made. So cut that trace and then we have to run a wire from this via to the fourth um, connector, uh, to the fourth pin on this connector here, or to the fourth contact. What do you call these <laughs> anyway? Um, to the fourth contact on this connector where there's nothing basically it's just the the there's no via or trace going from there so we have to solder it on on the, the very top here so that it still fits into a cartridge slot but i think i can handle that um yeah and here is the via which we can use to put the wire in and then we run a wire from there to there that's what we're gonna do righty so I'm 
starting with this here. It should be very flat. So I am um, so like so. It doesn't look nice, but I guess it's okay. So now we're running this here. I think I can cut it some more. So there we go. Maybe you could put some some isolation under there because it's pretty close to the via there. Um, yeah, I'll put some some electrical tape on there later, I think. So now we have to make a little mod on the back side as well. So here's the flip side of the board, and we have to cut another trace, and it is. Uh, this one. There's this via here, and we have to cut this trace that goes from the via. So I'm going to try to do this in a way that I don't hurt anything else. Which isn't easy because the the solder mask is quite nice on this board, which is uh, pretty surprising for the age, I think, because yeah, it's a pretty high quality board. Wouldn't have expected this in a budget uh, Atari release, but yeah. So there we go, that's our trace removed there. Um, and then we have to run a wire from the outermost pin here on the EEPROM to the third pin on from the bottom here on this chip that will make sure that the banking works correctly So there we are, should clip this a bit, because it's a tiny bit long. Alrighty, so that's, uh, that's our modifications. Now I think we can go and burn an EEPROM for this. So what we are going to need to do this are these um, 27C512 EEPROMs that I acquired recently. Um, can basically use anything else that has 64K capacity and has the same pinout. So um, what we're gonna need to do is to erase these and then um, prepare our uh, binary that we're gonna program into these, or into one of them, uh, and then we can test if our little circuitry here works. Oh, and these uh, state do not open except at approved field force protective workstation, so I, yeah, I think I don't have a, an approved field force protective workstation here at the moment. Uh, I'm working on it, but I'm going to open this anyway. <laughs> okay, no explosions so far. Let's try and erase these. Okay, I got my EEPROM burner set up and erased one of the EEPROMs. So, yeah, let me show you how I do this. This is a um, TL-866 EEPROM programmer. That's a pretty cheap um, model, but it's pretty good for the price at least. So I have my virtual Windows XP desktop here. Um, 
in inside virtual box which works quite well um, okay so now we are connected and we have to prepare our ROM of course um, so we are using I made a little list of my favorite 16 favorite um, 4k Atari games um, yeah, it's a matter of taste, really, so I'm not gonna argue about any of this. Uh, these choices, uh, these are what I came up with. I'm gonna be able to change these at a later time, um, it's just for for trying it. Um, the important things are River Raid, which is my absolute favorite, and um, yeah, that's about it. Space Invaders, maybe. So. The other ones are interchangeable, I think. River Raid has to be on my favorite games cartridge, so I'm putting that on there. Um, to we have to we have to merge these into one file basically, and we are going to do that by using our little DOS prompt here, and I'm using the copy um, command here. Copy B means uh, copy binary, and you can basically um, few people know this, but you can use copy to um, combine multiple uh, files. We have to make a little um, plus in there between them. So we have to. This is the first file name with the path. path uh, so we have to put a space there, plus another space, and the next one. So in this we have to repeat for all the games. I'm just gonna keep them in this order because yeah, whatever. Because I know which ones I have there. Pac-Man. Uh. So and then you have to make another space and name the um target. Which I will Atari 16 in one bin. So let's see if this works. System oh, can't find the data. Why? We have to put the, the slash there in another position. So I'm going up there all the way. The um slash has to be in front of the B, of course, because it's a, an option for the command. Not very good with um, DOS commands. Okay, so it's uh, copy slash B, not copy B slash. Now it should work, I guess. Yeah, one. There, yeah, we have one new one. So, and it is located as it is with Windows in my. No, think in my folder here. There we are. Atari 16 in 1. So this is our um, 64K. Should be 64K. Yes. It's exactly 64K, which is uh, 65,536 bytes. That's the exact. Um, number we are aiming at, so this could work. So let's see, let's um, fire up our programmer here, and we have to set it to the right EEPROM. I'm inserting the EEPROM here, going to search one 27 512. No, we have a 27C 512 here. There we are, and we have the dip 28, which means it's the, the through hole variant. Selecting this, and now we can. Um, we can first make a blank check, I think, if our EEPROM is blank. Yeah, it is blank. So we can now load our file. Open. Atari 16 and 1. 
and we are going to leave all these settings intact and now we can see our file here and now we can go and program it program and it should just program it I think let's see okay that goes takes a little while before uh, because it's uh, not a very fast EEPROM, it's a very old school EEPROM. But yeah, it should verify itself after burning. Let's see, yeah, verify. Yeah, successful. So we have programmed our EEPROM. So now we can, in theory, conveniently pick up our EEPROM and put it in here. Yeah, it should be inside there. And now, in theory, we can just put this into the Atari and uh, play the games we programmed onto the EEPROM. Let's see. And I did even manage to fit it in the enclosure, which is, yeah, should work, I guess. Maybe I'll break the thing here. Okay, let's turn it on. And sure enough, there is adventure. I'll turn it off and I turn it on again and it should and there's Berserk! Nice! <laughs> okay, so there is uh, Donkey Kong which sucks on the 2600 but at least we can play it here <laughs> which is pretty nice Okay, let's try the next one. Turning it off, turning it on again. And there's Frogger. <laughs> so cool. Ah, I like this. This is so nice. Okay, so I consider this a full success. Maybe you can mod your 32-in-1 cartridge like this as well. Or maybe you have done so, or maybe you have other ideas for mods, so write them in the comments below. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope to see you again sometime on my channel. If you want to support me in any way, you can, uh, of course, give this a thumbs up, which always helps with the YouTube rating. You can also check out my Patreon page where you can give me some money because I don't have much money. That's a bit of a problem because this stuff gets expensive. And I still want to show you um, nice things. Um, yeah, that would help a lot. And you can also follow me on Twitter and get in contact and yeah, subscribe to my channel, of course, if you like this stuff, because there's gonna be more of this. Anyway, thanks for watching, hope to see you again sometime. Oh, Pitfall, nice. Um, sorry, I'm a bit, I'm a bit, uh, uh, taken by playing with these games here. Um, this is only four kilobytes, it's so cool what these people did. Um, yeah, hope to see you again sometime. Thanks for watching. I'm Jan Beta. Bye. Bye.